no, nothing no, less no. than what Jesus blood and his righteousness. And I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but what holy lean on Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of folks that are being honored, but we need to honor the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and I praise God for those powerful testimonies of how God has been hearing and answering prayer. We'll touch base with that in just a little bit. Amen? Amen. My hope is built on nothing less than Play-Doh couldn't move. That Play-Doh couldn't do anything. 
sad thing is if you leave that image that you just made out in the air, it turned hard. That's what's happening to your hearts and men. Mm -hmm. you understand? See, our hearts get hard. Our minds get hard. Our attitudes get hard. We need a fresh breath from the Lord. Amen? Amen. We're going to hear from our administrator, and then we're going to follow on through what God wants us to, to, to look at today. Amen? Amen.
starting to become more and more of a reality. I talked to someone not long ago, and they began to say how they were feeling like an orphan. You know, mom and dad are both home with the Lord now, and uh, we're in a whole new arena of uh, existence. And there are things that you begin to reflect on, things that you begin to think about. And uh, we need to always thank God for the influences and the things that they pour into our lives. It calls us to be who we are today. You're going to remember some things that they may not have been crazy about, but you need to thank God that they were crazy about us. Y'all 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 in the same way. Thank God that they were crazy. Uh, amen. Uh, in addition to the announcements, uh, we do have some folks that are traveling. They should be on the road right now. Uh, we've been in contact with them last night and we're uh, praying for them now. Uh, there are several different missions going on and things that are happening throughout this morning. And you may see some pop in and pop back out and pop back in because there are things that are going on in our world. Um, as far as uh, some of the special prayer requests, I did uh, get a couple of updates. The young man that we were praying for uh, that was in the coma for the past five weeks, I got an update on yesterday that he's out of the coma. Amen. Thank God for all of you that prayed for us as we uh, were out of town on last week and here again. Don't think that I was cutting cookie because I was not cutting cookie and I went down in the beach with the beach and walk. Mm. <laughs> but we were in uh, our annual conference and uh, what happened is because of the pandemic, the conference took on a dual role this time and that dual role, there was a electronic video type uh, presentation as well as a physical manifestation and in my spirit and the way I roll I needed to be there amen so I was there and uh, I was doing everything that I could to maintain my responsibility and responsible way of, of uh, asking and serving and things of that nature I don't have to duck down and let it down. We stay until somebody came in. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But uh, again, it's an awful lot. Uh, I couldn't hear some of the things that were going on up here in the news, but there were things down there in the news. One of the things that they were celebrating, how many of you recall about five years ago, I think it was the fifth anniversary, when uh, all those police officers got attacked yeah. down in Dallas? Well, during that time, we were there, and uh, we actually, they actually had uh, put the conference on pause, and they had like a map, because uh, President Obama came down at that time, he was over at one of the, the, the places, and right where those police officers got attacked is right where we used to go to a class, that same building, and you know, God has been protecting us and all that. For yeah. folks that are going through it, there, was, uh, they were having a uh, uh, special time of reflection down there. Then I get back here and I find out that there's a lot of stuff that was going on. I didn't hear anybody here say, but there was a big march down down here uh, in Fairmount section. Yeah, the uh, that here again, all these things are coming up out of the woodwork. Yeah. Uh, God is still expecting men and I Amen. to represent yes. Him, to live like Him, yeah. to serve like Him. Yeah. Amen? Amen. There are certain expectations, even Jesus, when when the, the, the thing that Peter and the others, if you think about it, uh, before they went into the garden, Jesus had given them instructions about, you know, give us the word and this and that. That was a narrative to let them know that we can't go into the battle. Well, what happened is that Peter took 
literal. Yeah. And when they laid hands on Jesus, people took that sword and cut that man's ear off. Yeah. And when he cut his ear off, what messed his head up was Jesus said, no, 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 that ain't the way he rolled. Amen. And then he healed the man's ear right there. Mm -hmm. Are you understand? Amen. See, the Bible Amen. tells us that we ought to be uh, uh, wise as servants, but what? Amen. He didn't say that we got to sit on the sideline and get pounded. Mm -hmm. And we talked about a lot of that in the conference. And, and the way this thing is going across the country, but at the same time, the call is that we should still live and represent the God of our Amen. salvation in this way. Amen. 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 There, was, there was a guy that uh, used to tease at back at the job, and he used to talk all that mess and said, Man, I'm going to this and I'm going to that. And, and I messed his head up with my answer. And, and it was what I called one of those. God moments. So when he started telling me what he was going to do and all that kind of stuff, well, number one, he don't know me. And number two, he don't realize that, that I'm from the good. And, 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 and this, the other side of that is I'm still in Christ. So I've got to give Christ every opportunity yeah, to give yeah. me the wisdom and the insight on how to respond. So when he starts talking about he's all up in my face, talking about what he's going to do. I said, well, the thing is, that if you do that, you got an extra wife and five more kids. And he stopped and looked at me like I was on my mind. You know, you understand what I'm going through. See, now you might not connect with that. See, the thing is, you 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 hurt me, and you got another wife and five more kids that you got to take care of. And you said, man, you crazy. You walk so fast. And that's the way God can arm us. Amen. <laughs> to disarm folks. Yeah. Uh, I understand what I'm saying. Yeah. God will yeah. arm us to disarm folks. It's like the time when they, they started, uh, they were trying to set Jesus up and they started asking about John the Baptist and, and you know, well, well, the Baptist was John. Is it from, from men or is it from, from God? And and, uh, and Jesus said, well, you answer me this question and I'll answer you. And and uh, so they turned around and they, uh, they said, hmm, if we say it's of men, then the people will be ready to stone us. But if we say it's of God, then God's going to ask, well, okay, well, what's your excuse? Why aren't you obeying? Why aren't you following? So, see, God will give us the wisdom that we need. Yeah. You know, God will give us the tools that we need. And as it's been stated, we need to be praying for those in leadership, but we need to be praying for us too. Amen. Amen. You know? Lord, what will you have me do? We're going to get to that. Yeah. Amen. 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 It's in the text, and we'll Amen. get to that today. All right, so we want to continue to pray for all those special needs. We need to praise God, too. Let's give God a praise. Amen. That, that, that testimony that Sister Page brought to us of a concern on her heart and her willingness to step. I see a lot of times, you know, God may put you in a set of circumstances, amen, amen. And, 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 and you may not ever do what God, what you say you're going to do, amen. 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 But what happens is that what God will do sometimes is just like we talked about Abraham a couple weeks ago. God didn't need to know what Abraham was going to do. God wasn't the one that needed to be given. Abraham needed. And once you take that step in the direction of obeying God, God works things out. So Paige had already made herself available. And God touched the heart. So that she didn't have to go on that plan. Amen? Amen. But, but God, God worked that thing out. God worked that thing out. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Let's look um, and ask that we might go. Let's go to the throne of grace and uh, let's pray that God's will will be done in the lives of those that are present in the lives of those on the other end of this uh, communication, in the lives of those in this community, your friends and family, and all those that are going through. We're going to, we're going to ask one of our leaders to take us to the front of the grace this morning.
keep in mind that as we've been asking you to reach out, and touch each other by uh, uh, communicating, we're still in an, in an environment where um, such things as heat, stroke, heat exhaustion, they can wipe you out. And uh, our elder care and elder citizens, it can wipe them out. Amen? I want you to turn for our, uh, our offertory uh, passage is in 1 Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Corinthians 16. While you turn it, it just reminds me of how, uh, you know, sometimes we sit on the sideline. I remember Pastor Graves preached a message many years ago, and it was called the seat of Duna. Mm -hmm. The seat of Duna. You know, we often talk about, oh, we need this, we need that, we need the other, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But then we ourselves, we don't do anything to initiate how can I help? Just like as we heard in state, we need to be praying for our leaders and, and those in, in, in high places. But at the same time, we need to pray, Lord, what do I need to do? How can I help? How can I support? How can I encourage and how can I challenge? Amen. Are you in 1 Corinthians 16? And I'm going to read verses 1 and 2. Amen. This is the offertory passage that helps us to understand that even worship the Lord without giving is an important component according to the Word of God. I see some assistance going, so I'll wait just a couple of seconds. Amen. There we go. 1 Corinthians 16. Amen. Verses 1 and 2. Uh, I think it's Bible over here. I really appreciate you turning to the text. Uh, and again, we're being reminded that at some point, my prayer is that we'll have monitors up there so we can shoot right to the monitor and, and say, you and us sometime. And also, it'll be probably a lot bigger so that eyes like yours and mine, or eyes like mine, and some that might want to join me in the ranks will be able to see it. Amen? Listen to what the text says as Paul wrote to the Corinthian church. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do you. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath proposed, pro prospered him, I'm sorry, that there be no gatherings when I come. And what that is all about, Paul is teaching the folks at the church that as we purpose in our heart, as we uh, uh, reach out to be obedient to the Lord, you know, that which you, your tithes, your offerings, set it apart, so first day of the week, so that as you take care of that, the work of God goes on, and then the great joy comes in it and watching how God fills the gaps. Have you ever noticed that God can fill the gaps? Okay. You become obedient to the Lord, you start worshiping the Lord with your giving, and, and out of a cheerful spirit, and God has a tendency of filling the gaps. Amen? Amen. You know, uh, I, I don't have to go out and rob nobody. God will fill the gap. And whatever gap he doesn't fill now, um, I heard some stuff in this conference the other day. I shared it with my wife. She goes, why? Because some of the philosophies are there. But the point is that what gap that the Lord may not fill at the time, right? Maybe I don't need that. Mm. Do I need that extra hope? Mm. Come on, let's start with that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and one of the things that get me in trouble is that, you know, I, 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 I go to get something and then I start thinking about, you know, you know, wasting money. So instead of always getting, when I used to go to Leo, when we used to go to Leo, and I get the steak and the whole bits, like that. <laughs> okay? 
and then it makes me like that. Yeah. <laughs> Where y'all just stop laughing. Where I don't have a problem with going and getting in the Wendy's line and get the four for four. The four for four. Four, four dollars. Four dollars. <laughs> I get a hamburger. Cheese. I get a couple of nuggets. I get some fries. And I get some four for four. And for the main part, you know, if I never want to fries, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go. You know, I just got breakfast and lunch. All right. Turn with me, if you please, to Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Good to see you, bro. Yeah, it's month thing, month. See, when I call you by your name, woo, watch out. <laughs> and that ought to be an encouragement because if I can call you by your name, so can God. Amen? Amen. So that while I'm on my knees and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm riding around and I'm on the airplane and I'm praying and, 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 and I'm calling down names and then all of a sudden, you know, the Lord feed me a name. Ooh, yeah, I see him. Start calling the names and stuff like that. See, that's what God does. Amen. 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 I uh, sent a text last night to check up on somebody. I said, you know something? I was praying for you this week while I was doing it. The Lord sent me your name, and then we were talking about them after I returned to my wife. And that's chapter 9. Y'all yeah, pray for me. I want to read, I'm just going to read the first six verses. We're going to cover some more ground. But I want to read the first six verses. And I want you to be mindful. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Now, let me tell you the things that I observe that I may not say anything about. You may not think I'm aware of. Let me ask a question. Is that a large print Bible? Yes, sir. I noticed it week before that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. See, he went out and got him a large print Bible, something he can see. <laughs> and that's an indication that he wants to know <laughs> if what I'm saying is true or not. Y'all hear me? Amen. Acts 17, 11 is a verse that I really appreciate because Michael Paul was a powerful man. But the scripture says in Acts 17, I believe verse 11, that these were more noble than those who doesn't like it, that they searched the scriptures daily to see if those things are true. Amen? Amen. See, because, uh, you know, I, I'm just as frail as anybody else. Mm -hmm. And if I misquote or whatever, you know the Bible say iron sharpens iron. There was a lot of those folks wearing that t-shirt down there when I went to Texas, too. Iron sharp as iron. Yeah, they were buying them off the rack. Right? See, so if I stumble, if I say the wrong thing, and you don't come, and correct me, you don't love me. Mm -hmm. Because you should want me to be on track with the Lord. We can be talking about that track. Beginning with verse 1, now concerning the collection, oh, I'm sorry, Acts chapter 9, all right? Beginning with verse 1, and Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of them letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice say unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom 
thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the prince. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Amen. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Thus, reading God's word. And, and, and for a theme, uh, although there are several uh, uh, statements within this text that we can use, but I, I, I believe it all falls under an umbrella of what we've been discussing for the past several weeks where Jesus uses two words. And these two words, they, they, they continue to, to gnaw at me. Because in many instances, when Jesus was confronted, or when folks came up, you, 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 you're familiar with lip service, right? Mm -hmm. Amen? Y'all yeah. familiar with this thing called lip service? Mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Folks tell you they love you just as long as they mm -hmm. get what you got. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you run out of what you got, you know, that love gets put back into a, a jar, put back into a pocket, and set on the shelf for the next person. I didn't say that. But what happens is, Jesus would just make this statement, two-word statement, and he would just simply say, follow me. Follow me. That's all we want to talk about, follow me. Amen. And, 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 and perhaps we'll follow up next week with chosen by God. Amen. Follow me. There is a name I love to hear. I love Bible study on Wednesday night. We've been talking about how 
it is and how it was with Jonah. It didn't catch God off guard. But just as soon as Jonah chose to do what Jonah wanted to do, what happened? God was right there on the scene. You and I, when we choose to do what we want to do, God is right there on the scene. Uh, there are times when we need to reevaluate who we are and the path that we're on. See, as we grow, we also have a tendency to change. Let me ask you that question. As you grow, don't you know that we have a tendency to change? Sometimes we change the way we think, we change the way we dress, we change the way we act, we change the way we speak. Amen. Uh, one of the things that you'll find in couples, all that my, my, my grandbaby says that I like the movies that got that lovey dovey in it. <laughs> and then I I have to remind them, I say, yeah, well, the reason I like the lovey dovey movies is because of the fact that in the lovey dovey movies, they have a tendency of working on relationships. Amen? Amen. In many relationships, as the relationship grows, we grow out of, quote unquote, love. We grow out of what we call fellowship. What is our, our, our mission statement? To build faith, family, and what? Fellowship. So you start with faith because if you're in, in the right vertical relationship with the Lord, that's going to help your horizontal relationships with men, women, girls, and women. In marriages, my counsel has always been because the Bible says that God is love and he asks a question back in verse John, how can you say you love one another? How can you say you love me who you never seen and yet you hate your brother who you see there? Amen? So even with marriages and marital relationships, I take point blank. It's a, uh, I believe it's like fourfold. It said that you ought to love one another. Amen. If you can't love one another as husband and wife, then you need to love one another as a, 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 a neighbor. Or you need to love as two. Or you need to love one another as a friend. Or you need to love one another as a sister or brother in Christ. Are you understand what I'm saying? The Bible says that we ought to love our enemies. Amen? Pray for them. Bless them. And pray for those that despite you. So God is telling us we are not off the hook for love. Mm -hmm. No matter how they treat us. I recall uh, back during the election time, we were teaching Wednesday night Bible study, and I asked the question, about love of, of this particular person that mm -hmm. was running mm -hmm. and upset a whole lot of lives and, and the sister like the fell out the chair. Ooh, she said, Red, that's gonna take a whole lot of love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a true statement. Mm -hmm. And I'm not gonna mention the name because everybody in the room would know who I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those that came to Bible study, you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> but here's the other piece. I said that as we grow, we have a tendency to change. Mm -hmm. So that later on, amen, amen. I, I, I said, you know something? God may allow them to get in, regardless of what we want. And what I noticed that there was a change in her prayer life. She began to pray even for the one that we were not or she was not in support of. See, that's the way God operates. Amen. Jesus says, do what? Follow me. Amen. Now the Bible goes on to show that the Apostle Paul, he was a solid citizen, which some would call the whole package. Good. Amen. Good. 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 His resume read like that of a top draft pick. Philadelphia and a lot of folks around the basketball world. <laughs> well, y'all know where I'm going. <laughs> Everybody talked about that Simmons right. Mm. Amen. And yet he had such prospect. And yet he does such great things during certain pieces of the series. Mm -hmm. But when it comes down to the wire, there were some things that you While I was in Dallas, one of the close persons that I work along with, he was 
uh, we were talking about the Eagles. And I was asked, was I uh, uh, on the Wentz wagon from the very beginning? I ain't going to tell you what I said. <laughs> but I can tell you what he told me. Nick Foles is the godfather of this. And uh, he was telling me about how uh, Nick, in his commitment to Christ, yeah. Yeah. his walk to follow yeah. Christ. Yeah. Now, I will tell you this. I was very impressed with Parsons' walk. His investment and how he focused on trying to do things to please the Lord. Amen. Okay? Amen. Now there's some other things that got in the way. Right. And that's why it's important for you and I to recognize that there are things going to get in our way. Amen. Yeah. So what happens is Paul's testimony, he was like a, a, a draft pick. Listen to yeah. what, what the scripture says about his testimony. It says he was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Benjamin, Israel. Of the tribe of Benjamin, he was a Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law, he was a Pharisee. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church. Yeah. Touching the righteousness which is in the law, he was blameless. Then he said, But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but lost, what? For the excellency of the knowledge of of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb. Why? That I might win. Amen. Amen. That was his post BC, BC before Christ. That was his post conversion testimony. Amen. Amen. But yet. When he met Christ, he had to reassess what he thought of himself. See, remember last week, we were raising three questions. Two of the questions Jesus asked, and the third one we asked. The first question was, who do men say that I am? The second question was, who do you say that I am? And the question that Jesus didn't ask but it's inferred throughout the scripture, and we ask it of ourselves, who do you say you are? Amen? Amen. Who do I say I am? Who do you say you are? And knowing that there are other folks that are sitting and listening and observing. So today we want to look at these questions. Who does Christ, are you hearing me? You can write this down if you want to. Who does Christ want to? you to be. Who does Christ want you to be? Second is, are you listening to what he's trying to tell you and show you of who he wants you to be? Are you listening? See, the reason I ask that question that way is because over in Romans, the scripture speaks about how God unmasks God unveils what he wants from us. God will speak to your heart and let you know what he wants and is expecting for you to do. Amen? Amen. So the question is, are you listening? Am I listening? That's why I have to take the time to reassess myself from time to time. Lord, am I on track with you? Am I doing what you want me to do? Am I plowing down the path? Now, Here's another key time when you ought to be doing stuff like that. You know, when you start having birthdays and stuff like that, you ought to, you, you always think about your birthday. You think about, you know, where, where you've come and where you plan to go. You think about all that stuff, but do you think about your spiritual birth? And, and, and thank God for what he delivered you from. And look to God to try to find out, Lord, where do you want me to go from here? And you're going to see that in the text. And third, are you considering the path that he's preparing you for? See, there are times when as God is speaking to your heart and as God is shaping your life and as God is realigning your circumstances that there are some things that God might want from you. I've got to put a glass on the phone. See? There are some things that God might want from you 
that you don't want him to have. Amen. There are some things God might want you to do and you don't want him to know that that ain't where I'm um, That's not. I use an expression from time to time. Sometimes when the Holy Spirit is drawing us, we have a tendency to reach down and hold up a stop sign or a yield sign. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. I say, you're going to see later on in this particular message, and perhaps more so next week, that there was a brother that held up a yield sign. Hold up, Lord. Uh, we got a problem here. Amen. Mm -hmm. And there are times we'll hold up a stop sign because we really don't want to do what God wants us to do. Preaching was not in my life and plan when I was growing up. Amen. Amen. So, although... You might not have heard me verbalize it. How many times do we tell you that, you know, we don't want to say things out loud because we're afraid God might hear us? But what about the fact that the Bible said that before your thought got to you, God already knew it? Are you understanding where I'm going? See, 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 see. The apostle really thought he was on course and doing what God wanted him to do. Until that very special day on the Damascus Road when Jesus introduced him. Mm. Amen. Right yeah. He introduced him to what? A divine course correction. You might want to write that down. <laughs> course correction. Course correction. Course correction. You know, one of the things, the reason I don't, I'm not real crazy about driving in Dallas, because every time we go down there, they got all these brand new roads. And they're all over the place. And if you try to go from your past memory, you will wind up in trouble. Because they got another new route. Now, here's a classic example. Those of you that travel to Jersey from time to time, come across the Betsy Ross Bridge and try to get back on 95. There's a course correction up there that takes you all down through Aramingo and you go and you can feel like you're still going on this circle. <laughs> and I think I'm on my way back to Jersey, but then all of a sudden it says, oh, there's 95 right here. And you drop down on 95 and you cut back over. It's a course correction. A course correction. Jesus will take us on a divine course correction. So what is a course correction? Here's a definition that uh, NancyMatthews.com says. A course correction is when a spacecraft gets off its trajectory or a path through space. It must be put back on the right path. Now the location of the spacecraft is determined, right? And its course vector, the speed and direction of its flight, is recalculated. Uh, and once they calculate it, this is compared with the path that it should be on. So let's just say, for instance, I, 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 I gave my life to the Lord, and God is moving me in a given direction. Let's take Jeremiah, for instance. And when God called Jeremiah to preach, and then God turned around and let it be known that there's a course correction before you open your mouth. Because God said, don't tell me that you're too young. Don't tell me this, that, and the other. And then God established that course correction as a reminder that before you entered your mother's womb, I already told you. Before you entered your mother's womb, I already set you apart. I already have your destination in a certain track. Are you understanding what I'm saying? I know you might not want to hear this stuff, but it's in the text. Amen. So the Bible says, as we read earlier, that Saul was still breathing out threats. This is the same Saul earlier that was when they stoned Stephen to death. Saul was holding the coats. I tell you, Saul was an important person. This is the same Saul that before they changed the name to Paul. Now everybody been excited about Paul. Yeah, Apostle Paul, he was a bad man. Yes, he was. He was a bad man on the other side of grace, too. My Lord. My Lord. But he fought. He was on the right path doing what God wanted him to do. See, because Christ, when Christ came on the scene and he was bringing in the message of salvation, this transition from God, everybody wanted him to shut up. Amen. They did not like the message of Christ. And I will guarantee you that you will run in contact with folks that do not like the fact that you belong to Jesus. There are going to be folks that's going to put 
distance between you and himself. Why? Because now I belong to Jesus. Because I choose to live like Jesus. Because I choose to change some things in my walk. Why? Because I understand now that that's not where God is rolling. Amen. So the Bible says that, that Saul was still breathing out these threatenings and slaughter. Threatens and slaughter. Now Paul, he was in, in such a unique way that uh, he needed this course correction because he thought he was doing God a favor. And the phrase Jesus used so often to his disciples was, follow me, follow me. Over in Matthew, what did he say when he walked across, across Galilee? And, and he come across these folks and, and Peter and Andrew, his brother, they were casting nets. And, and, and what did Jesus tell them? He said, follow me and I'll make you what? Fish to men. See, I got a different trajectory for you, man. I have a course correction for your life. Amen? And in and, 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 and Matthew 16, and I think we touched on this one last week, where he says when Jesus uh, said unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him do what? Deny himself. Do what? Take up his cross and do what? Follow me. Now the thing is that Jesus didn't do a lot of begging. Amen. Amen. He just told you straight up, follow me. Amen. See, the bottom line is that 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 God has given us choices. Amen. God has given us a choice. He's given us opportunities. And he continues to send folks to encourage us. He sends his work, his word to remind us the Holy Spirit lives in us, especially if you say the Holy Spirit is living in you. And when you get ready to get on the wrong course, the Holy Spirit will give you an unction. That's your course correction notification. Amen. You hear that? Amen. He will notify you that I uh, have you ever went to say something and you said, oh, I should not say this? <laughs> have you ever already got it out and the Lord said, you should not have said that? <laughs> One of the things I try to encourage folks, and, and here again, after all these years, I still find that in my humanity that I need course corrections. Amen? Amen. See, in husbands and wives and in relationships, the first thing you hear this thing, right, uh, this is free. It's free stuff. Mm -hmm. First thing come out of your mouth is what they're going to remember. Yes. yes. The very first thing you come out of your mouth. Yes. That was before they come up with tape recorders and whether she got a recorder on you or not, she going to remember. Yes. And she'll remember it word for word. You need a course correction. So what happens is the key in, <laughs> is in letting go, abandoning our plans, our purposes, Exchanging our will for Christ's will. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, what? I'm still living. But not I. Christ is living in me. And the life that I now live by faith, I live by faith in the Son of God. Love me and gave himself for me. So when I hear this particular phrase, it troubles me sometimes. Because it challenges me to review my personal walk. Review my journey. Because we shouldn't have to wait for a formal season of revival to do a review. Amen? Amen. In our personal prayer time, what happens? In, in our devotions, in our daily activities, or simply reflecting on our thought life or practical service, we should be asking ourselves the question, am I still on track with God and His will for my life? Amen? Okay. See, only you can ask the question for you. Now you can counsel and coach and you can encourage and you can challenge folks that they need to, to, to ask that question. Amen? Amen? Just like the young man that came up to Jesus and said, hey, you know, what do I need to do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus says, uh, follow the commandments. So what did he say? Which ones? Mm. Mm. That's a no brain. Yes. The scripture said, if I keep the whole law and offend in one I'm guilty of them all. So you need to follow them all. Amen? Amen. So you see, we don't need a revival Amen. if the Holy Spirit is bringing conviction. Amen. Amen. So what's happening is, Paul was so committed to keeping and promoting the Judean way of living that he went about it with all legal authority he could get. And he honestly felt that he was on track with God. Amen? Amen. Paul didn't do nothing slouchy. 
Amen. And you and I should be doing whatever we can to improve our presentation of Christ to the world. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. The way we walk, the way we talk, the way we conduct ourselves and all that kind of stuff. I, no, I don't want to go back and try to imitate what the world is doing. Amen. So that I can bring them to me. I remember many years ago, I had these, uh, uh, there was a, a, a notification, it was in the paper and, and things of nature. And what it was, there was this, this stripper. And what this stripper would do, she would go in and she would strip in the different bars, and, and et cetera, et cetera. And as she was stripping, she was passing out gospel mm. Now, there's probably a better way to get the message across. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are, are you understanding what I'm saying? Right? <laughs> what I'm saying now is, you know, this, this is real. Amen? So what's happening is, as Paul went to the high priest and he got blessings from them, he got permission from them and all those kind of things, the scripture makes it really, really clear that uh, where Paul stood. So the three things I want to leave in your spirit is that to truly follow the Lord, we need to recognize it. You need to recognize it. Amen? Amen? Second, you need to respond to it. Amen? You need to respond to it. And then third, you need to rely on it. Amen? You need to recognize it. You need to respond to it. You need to rely on it. Because see, when you call on the Lord and God gives you an answer, you need to trust that God knows what He's doing. Yes. Are you understanding what I'm saying? There are positions that I had that I turned down. And as I was growing in the Lord and growing to understand this is the course that God has me on. My trajectory was in ministry. So when I started turning down different positions, when I started turning down work opportunities, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anything that would bring conflict with ministry, I would I would stay away from it. Or I would steer away from it. I would trade it off. I would work my around the clock schedule so that I would work on the midnight shift and be free. And there was no way in the world God was going to bless me to work through the night and then I was going to go home and lay down and go to sleep on it. Oh no. I would work that midnight shift and I would trust God to give me what I need to come and do ministry and serve Him in spirit and in truth. Are you understanding what I'm saying? See, that's the kind of drive that Paul had. Amen. So the scripture says that as he was journeying, right, as he was journeying, he came near Damascus. That's after he had already gone to the high priest and got letters of extradition. Amen. Y'all seen some of those shows where you got those, those uh, bounty hunters and the bounty hunter, they got, uh, they got the paperwork and they hunt you down all over the country and they grab you so they can drag you back and turn you in and all that kind of thing. That's what the Bible says Paul was doing. He went and he got that authority from the high priest. And the Bible says as he journeyed, he came to Damascus, suddenly there was a disruption. Amen? Amen? While he was heading down the road, he had his posse with him, he had his papers with him, and then all of a sudden, there was God. Bright, shining light. And it knocked him to the ground. And as God knocked him to the ground, he fell to the earth. The Bible says he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul. See, God is so precise, saints, that he can call you by your name. Are you understanding what I'm saying? When God called me to preach, he didn't call my wife. When God called me to preach, he didn't call my daddy. Although he gave my daddy some insight because my daddy was my pastor. And, and he sat there and he would not tell me a word. He said, well, praise the Lord. He said, God told me already. But I wouldn't tell you because you need to know this for yourself. Amen. Are you understanding what I'm saying? See, so you need to recognize God for yourself. There are things and habits, there are things that were going on in my life. And no, my pastor didn't tell me. God told me. Amen. Why? Because I had to recognize the voice of God. I had to get, he was trying to get my attention, just like he's trying to get the attention of a whole lot of folks that are both in this room and on the other side of that screen. God is trying to get your attention to tell you there's something that I want to do in your life. Now, some folks, God might work with you from where you are, but there's some folks, God might want you back in the building so that somebody can look in your eyes, 
so that somebody can come up alongside you, so that somebody can say, come here, I need to pray for you. I need to pray with you. When I was getting ready to get on the bus to try to go from the, the car rental place over to the airport, what happened was this guy came up to me, and I'm trying to pull my stuff together, and he walked up, and he looked down on me, and I never looked up. And he asked me, he said, are you a pastor? And I never looked up. I said, I said yes. And he took my paper and he wrote this verse of scripture on it. And then after everybody got out, and he almost made me miss my plane. But after everybody got out, he, I, I say he jacked me. Because he got my attention. And he got me there. And he began to pour into my spirit some things. He said, the moment I saw you, I knew. And then he began to share some things that were confirmations from the conference that I had just left. I'm riding along and I'm trying to process these things, but see, Paul needed some processing. He needed to reevaluate what he was doing so that he could know whether he was on the path of God or not. He thought he was. But Jesus says, why are you persecuting me? And he says, who art thou, Lord? See, at that moment of contact, this wise, accomplished, spiritual, astute, well-trained, intellectual man. See, that's, that, that sounds like a lot of us. Amen. 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 We don't throw it all up. We've got all of these different accolades and all these different labels and all these different titles. And I'm, I'm somebody, somebody in the neighborhood and the community and all that kind of stuff. But when all that stuff was said and done, he raised the question when being asked by, called by his name, Saul, Saul, and his response was, who are you, Lord? While God is calling on you, whether it be for salvation, whether it be for repentance, whether it be for, for service or surrender, are you responding? Amen. That's great. Amen? Because if you don't respond, you're not going to get where you need to go. You're not going to get the blessing that God wants to pour out of you. You may not hear a loud, audible voice, but you know that you are learning uh, when God is calling and tugging on your heart strength. Do you recognize it? Amen. Do you recognize him trying to get your attention? I heard somebody say this morning that we need to be praying uh, for our leaders. Amen. Mm -hmm. And we need to be praying for our community. I can assure you that if you go back to last week's lesson, when Jesus asked the question, who would men say that I am? Suppose we change the question and say, what should men be doing? Hmm. And what did Jesus tell Peter? He said, first of all, didn't tell you that. Watch out, saints. There are things that God will speak in your spirit. There are things that God is letting us know. But are we recognizing his voice? And, uh, and, and the next point is, well, are we responding? Amen. See, so, so, so when, when he was calling and tugging on our heart, the illustration is that we had our, this, this weekend, we had our, our, our youngest uh, grandbaby with us all day yesterday. And what happened was every time I heard her, and you fill in the blank, every time I heard her express herself, I would try to determine what kind of cry it was. Amen. I hear her make a noise. Like, what, 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 what's going on? What 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 that would be? Is she hungry? Is she sleeping? Is she wet? What what's going on? You see, because there are different kinds of cries, and mothers know those cries. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? But let me ask you this: If a mother can learn the cry of her baby, do you think God wants to know and wants us to know? When he's speaking to us, what he's trying to get us to understand. Are you understanding what I'm going to say? So, so does she want to talk? Does she want me to just talk to her? Is it time to play with her feet? I'm trying to find out what my response should be. Amen? Like Saul, I need to make an appeal to respond to her. So Saul said, Who are you, Lord? And Jesus asked the question, I'm Jesus you persecute. And then Paul asks the question in his response. He says, uh, uh, what would you have me to do? Amen? Mm -hmm. The Bible says he was trembling. He was astonished. 
But he still asks the question, what would you have me to do? Do you know what a lot of folk do? Instead of us asking God what he would have us to do, we stay away from church. Amen. Mm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And we figure if I stay away for X amount of weeks, I got past it. Well, let me tell you what some of my mentors taught me. Preaching a series. Mm -hmm. Because if you're preaching in a series, this is the series. They may stay away for every Sunday but communion Sunday. Amen. Amen. But if you're preaching a series, you have an opportunity to overlap and they still going to get the message. They still going to get where you're trying to go. For the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about Jesus and our identification. Amen. Mm -hmm. Who do you say they say I am? Who do you say I am? And what I take next week, Lord willing, we may be talking about chosen by God. Amen. 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 So that if you think you're getting away from it today, guess what? <laughs> and the interesting thing is that even if you watch it on, online, what's going to happen? You're still going to get the word. That's the way God operates. God left us His Word. He preserved His Word. So to respond to Him, He says, Who are you, Lord? Now that I recognize who I'm talking to, what will you have me to do? Now God didn't save you and I for window dressing. I need you to understand that. Amen? Mm -hmm. Anybody ever heard that, 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 that expression in our world? You are good I am. Yeah. <laughs> I drop my head so that y'all 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 understand what I'm talking about. Amen. We use that expression. Oh man, that's a good eye can. Uh, there's another expression that I've heard say, he ain't bad on the eyes. Amen. 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 See, 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 that's not what God saved us for. God didn't save us to be his trophies. He saved us so that we can lift him up as his servants. And that as we're lifting him up, he will do the drawing of men to himself. Mm -hmm. But in order for us to do that, we've got to learn to respond to him. And how do we respond? we got to learn to respond by being obedient to him. we got to learn to respond by being submissive to him. Amen? Amen. we got to learn to respond to him by, 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 by doing the things that he is calling us to do. Amen? The Bible goes on to show us that um, that he saved us to transform us. Amen? To change us, to transform. What do you mean transform? Um, there's a song we sing, say, I once was young, but now I'm old. And it's also in Psalm 37. I once was young, and now I'm old, and never have I seen the righteous forsaken or the seed made bread. His whole mindset began to change. All that variation that you and I have, it need to go bye-bye. Why? Because now I am learning to respond to God. I am learning, was the song we sing, I'm learning how to lean and depend on Jesus. He's my friend and he's my God. I'm learning how to lean and depend on Jesus. I found out, I always think of him as Jack, I found out that if I trust him, he will provide. Amen. Amen. God saved us to reconcile us to himself. See, we are the ones that's lost, not him. Amen. Amen. We are the ones that get off track, not him. So in his salvific responsibility to us, he saved us so that he could reconcile us. Are you understanding what I'm saying? See, when me and dad used to go fishing, we used to go deep sea fishing, and we catch all them blues and stuff like that. Well, you, you use a different kind of leader when you're going after blues than you do if you're going after some of the other fish. We got some of them other fish, and you got that little plastic leader on there, and that fish will come up and he'll bite right through that line. But when you go after blues and sea bass and stuff like that, you use a long steel leader. And as you drop that leader down in there, see some fish are dumb. You don't even have to put no bait on it. But as you drop that leader down in there, and they come up to grab the leader, guess what happens? They can't bite through the steel. And then sometimes they're strong, and you just wait them out. God will wait you out. God will read you in a little bit. And then if you want to fight him, fight him, fight him, especially if you're uh, fishing up near the shore, as you start getting closer and you start banging up against them rocks and everything, after a while you start settling down and let God bring you on in. He's trying to reconcile us. He wants to repurpose us. Are you understanding what I'm saying? What do you mean by repurpose? Oh, well, 
A lot of times uh, uh, you wind up going to a different job or changing jobs and all that kind of stuff. Well, there are some things that God might want to do different in your life at the different stages of your life. Are you understanding what I'm saying? See, when I was young and I, I started early in my career, I was a meter reader. And then I went into the maintenance division. I became a machinist. I, had, I worked on turbines. I worked on motors. I worked on pumps. I did all big electrical com uh, uh, compliance. I worked out in the electric yard and all of that. But then, you know, God began to show me that there were some differences that he was about to introduce into my life. So what did I do? I went out of the tool management piece into people management. And I became a supervisor. I went into training and all these other things. And at different stages of my life, Paul was at a stage. He was still Saul now, right? He was still Saul. He still thought he was doing God a favor. But what happened was God wanted to repurpose him. He wanted to repurpose his life. He wanted to give him some new tools to work with. He wanted to equip him. Do you realize that every one of you that has been born and washed in the blood of the Lamb, God has given you a spiritual gift. Now the bottom line is that spiritual gift that God has already given you is for your re-equipping. Re Amen. It's for your repurposing. And as God equips you, you know, according to 1 Corinthians, the scriptures speak about all those gifts in the body. And no one gift does it all. Amen. But we all come together so that we might be able to accomplish the work of God. Well, here's the news flash. You have gifts. But the thing is, if you're not responding to God, you're not going to understand what your gifts are. You're not going to understand how God wants to use you. You're not going to understand how God wants to develop you. Why? Because Jesus said, now I need to go back to the thing, what he said. I need you to what? Follow me. Amen. Are you understanding what I'm saying? I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saving you so that you can run wild. I'm not saving you so that you can go out and do your own thing. I'm not saving you so that you can go out and you can be prop yourself up in the big lights and all that. I'm saving you so that you can represent me. How are you going to represent me? You're going to represent me by my empowerment. You're going to represent me by allowing me to repurpose your life to do what I want you to do. You're going to represent me by me pouring my spirit in you so that you'll do things my way. Uh, in the Old Testament, there was struggle that Moses was having with his people. And, and, and at that particular point, Moses was upset. God was ready to wipe them all out. But what happened was God told Moses, I want you to get these folks around you. He said, I'm going to take up your spirit. He didn't say I'm going to give them all their own new program to work with. He said, I'm going to take up your spirit because you're the leader and you have the vision and you have the plan. I'm going to take up your spirit and I'm going to put it on them so that we might be able to get the stuff. Why? Because they begin to respond to God. Amen. Amen. God saved us to do so, so we need to first respond to him in obedience. Saul's question was, what will you have me to do? And the Lord began to explain to him, all I want you to do right now, isn't it interesting, God will take you step by step. Because when he began to speak to, uh, uh, to, to, to Saul, the Lord told him, I want you to uh, recognize and realize that, that, that I want you to get up, and uh, uh, I want you to go to a place that I'm going to send you. And when you get there, right, I'm going to have somebody to come and tell you what you need to do. All right? And, 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 and the scripture says for, in verse 9, for three days he was without sight. You hear that? And, and, and he didn't eat or drink. Amen. Amen. And what happened was, that during the course of this time, this is what you need to see about relying on the Lord. See, when you rely on the Lord, God might change the way he does things. Because Saul was always an independent bull. He had a crowd. He had his posse. But when he met Jesus on the Damascus Road, when he began to recognize him, and when God, and he responded to the Lord, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? The Lord said, I want you to go to a street called Straight. I'm not going to give you all the details right now, Saul. Are uh, you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible says over in, in Acts 22, see there were three occasions where this particular testimony is recorded. It's in Acts chapter 9, Acts 22, and Acts 26. But in chapter 22, Paul was talking and he testified about how wicked he was. And, uh, 
from the perspective of he was trying to destroy the Christian community. But now that God says on that Damascus road, I'm going to repurpose you, I'm going to do you all over, I'm going to re, uh, reform you, I'm going to transform you. And he says, well, what do you want me to do now, Lord? He said, I want you to sit still and I want you to go to the street called straight. But notice, to go down there, God made him blind. He took his sight from him. So he couldn't just come in. He couldn't even act like he was in charge no more. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, the Bible says that when God spoke to him, one, one, one session says that they heard murmuring. Some One say that they didn't hear anything. But the important piece is that the text says that they did not understand what God was saying. So Paul had to rely not only on the Lord, but he also had to rely on those that were with him. Amen. Are you understanding what I'm saying? See, now, all along, everybody come to you. But now, he's at a place where he has to depend on them. It's interesting because you may not always see things the way you want them to go. And what happens is that God will have to redirect your steps. God will redirect your steps through other people. God will redirect your steps. Why? Because you're responding to him. And now mm -hmm. that, 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 that you're learning to rely on him, God is, is the one that you need to talk to. God told him, I'm going to send you down to this place, and when you get down there, I'm going to send somebody to tell you what you need to know. Are you understanding what I'm saying? There was an illustration and, and, uh, that we rehearsed a few weeks ago, uh, about a week or so ago, many years ago. Uh, my brother Donnie, the one that's in uh, New Mexico, he and I were together, and uh, the Lord pressed on my heart to go to South Carolina. Didn't tell me why. Just like he didn't tell Paul all the details of what was going to go on down in this particular place. But what happened was, uh, we were told, I was told, go to South Carolina. My car was broke, didn't have no way to get there. But before I got on the road, I owned another car. God opened that door. Now the car had not been proven out. I did not get a chance to take it down and get it all. All, all inspected and all that kind of stuff, but I just got on the road. We got on the road, while we're halfway down the road, all of a sudden the car did a little shimmy. And I said, whoa, am I asleep? No, and it shimmied again. I pulled to the side of the road. And when I got to the side of the road, the tire went flat on the, on the passenger right rear side. And when I stepped out, here is how God operates. When God is repurposing, when God is redirecting, when God wants you to be in a place where he wants you to be, to do what he wants you to do. I stood out and I looked down and my brother looked down over the thing. His eyes were popping and I said, well, I guess we got to change it. We changed the tire, went on to the Carolinas. We met family that I had never seen in my life. The subject matter came up and we began to go into ministry mode. When we took grandma back home that evening, she said, the Lord sent y'all here. And then she began to backfeed us with information about why and what we said was so important. Amen? So, so what happens is that God is telling Saul to go to this place and wait in this particular place because when you get to that particular place, I'm going to have somebody to come and tell you what's going on. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Now, while he was doing that, and I'll just leave you with this. God called Ananias. Told Ananias, I want you to go talk to this guy. And Ananias pulled out his heel sign. Hold up, Lord. We done heard about this guy. We know about his behavior. We know about his lifestyle. We know about his habit. And then God told Ananias, you do what I tell you to do. In other words, follow me. Amen. And I'll tell Paul, or Saul, what suffering he has to do. See, that's one of the reasons why we don't like to follow that. A lot of us may feel that if we go to follow the Lord, we don't have to suffer. Mm -hmm. A lot of us feel that if we go to follow the Lord, he's going to tell us to do some stuff that we don't want to do. Yeah, mm. he's going to tell you to do. Here's a news plan. Amen? And none of us are going to escape this. Do you honestly think God can tell you to do something that you don't want to do? If he tell you to stop sinning, uh, hello, hello. In the Hebrew writer, he says that Moses 
refuse to enjoy sin for a season. Yes, God is going to tell us to stop doing things that we don't want to stop doing. Amen. 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 But the bottom line is that if you and I are going to follow the Lord, we've got to learn to recognize His guidance, His direction, His will. We've got to respond to what? His will, His way. When we say the model prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be whose name? Thy name. What happened? Thy kingdom. And what? Thy will be done. But where, God, do you want your will to be done? See, we, we, we sort of feel like we're waiting to get the glory and let God have his will. That ain't what the model says. The model says, Thy will be done on earth. Mm -hmm. On earth. As it is. God is saying, in essence, I ain't no different in heaven than I am on earth. My expectation in heaven is the same as it is on earth. I saved you on earth so that when you get to heaven, you won't find no surprise. Now, I'm the same. Amen. 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 So, 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 so when we look at these things, he, he had to rely on those that God had assigned to be with him to get him where God needed him to be. He was to meet with someone who was not initially on board with the plan of God. Ananias was not no favorite of Saul. <laughs> But here's the issue. When God did the same to Ananias that he did to Saul, he told Saul, go to this place. He told Ananias, go to that man. Amen. Ananias, when, when, because he done wrong a little bit, Ananias says, okay, Lord, and if you get into the text, you'll see where Ananias walk up on Saul and say, brother Saul. Are oh, you understand what I'm saying? I told you earlier, God wants to change the way we think. He'll change the way we speak. He'll change the way we act. He'll change the things that we do. Why? Because God needs us in alignment with him to do what he wants. God challenged Saul to follow him, to go where he was sending him. God took care of Ananias' alignment with the will of God. To follow God, we must trust him. Amen? To follow God, we need to respond to Him and heed the call unto salvation. Heed His call unto service. You know, a lot of folks, they don't mind being saved, but they don't want to serve. Let it soak, Saint. Let it soak. Let it soak. We don't have a problem having fire insurance. Amen. But if we don't want to serve the Lord, we don't want to go out and get the knocks and the bruises that come with the territory. Amen. There are times folks going to cuss you out just because of your Jesus. Amen. 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 I, 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 I preached at a church. I ain't going to tell you where it was. But when I got there, because uh, I had a neighbor that used to, I had a white car at that time, and I didn't wash my car a lot. I don't worship my car. Amen. God does a good job to keep my car. Every once in a while, I'm going to go to the car. Amen. But this particular time, uh, um, I was washing the car. And, 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 and a young lady come out and said, by the time you watch that, we'll break and break and break and break and Now, I didn't say nothing. I tell you, God, I'll teach you how to shut your mouth. So I went to this church that, that Sunday, and I came in the back of the church. And, and, and then when the usher came to get me to take me up to the pulpit, and, and I, as, I'm, as I'm turning this corner, she looked up at me and her eyes got big. God's got a sense of me. Amen. I preached that morning, and guess what? You know? Uh, God sent her to the front to offer the, the love gift to the Christ. Are, are you understanding where I'm going? Amen. See, 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 see. God told Ananias, this is what I need you to do. I want you to come out of your comfort zone. I want you to come out of your Ananias zone. I want you to come out of your yo zone and get up here and do what I ask you to do. We must respond to God on, watch now, on his turn. Yeah. Not our yeah. Amen? We must follow what? In spite of the obstacles we incur. Paul lost his sight. He lost his sense of personal direction. He fasted and he prayed during that three-day ordeal. We must be willing to rely on God to navigate us through the uncharted waters of transformation. 
uncharted waters of discipleship. See, when God disciples you, he might disciple you and give you a responsibility that he may not give you. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. And far too often, we're looking at the other guy, and we're wondering about, him. why can't I do that? Why can't I do this? Well, while you're chasing the other guy's ministry, you're not accomplishing what God wants. Amen. 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 God wants you and I to be the representatives of the hope of glory. Remember, the thief on the cross, he asked Christ, would you just remember me? Remember me when you get into your kingdom. Amen? Amen. Saul was challenged to trust him. We are asked to take up our crosses daily and what? Follow him. Amen. Amen? See, the question is, or the statement is, as Jesus says it, and he don't waste a lot of time going through a lot of uh, discussion, but he said, follow me. The disciples came up and said, but Master, where are you, you letting me hear that tonight? Follow me. Master, what you going to do? Follow me. Master, uh, uh, follow me. Amen. And that does not change. That has not changed. God is still calling you and I to do what? Follow, follow him. him. Regardless of the pandemic, follow him. Amen. Regardless of what's going on in our job, follow him. Amen. I heard somebody say about folks and jobs, etc., etc. What? Follow him. And then, uh, you know what, some of these folks have told me down in Texas, a lot of them are better off now than they were before. Amen? Amen. Follow him. A lot of entrepreneurs are coming out of the world. People are learning how to start their own businesses. Why? Because of the pandemic. Amen? Amen. But now, don't let the pandemic come between you and your God. Amen. Are you understanding Amen. what I'm saying? Don't let the pandemic separate you and your God. Do not allow anything to come between you and your God. I shared with you a few weeks ago about how when Abraham took his son to offer him as a sacrifice for the Lord. In my spirit, periodically, i got to do that with my wife. I love her, and I praise God for her. But when she gets to the place, and when we get those moments where, you know, I, I, I'm liable to step away from what God wants me to do, and start migrating to what she might want. Watch out now. Girl, you are becoming an idol. And that means I need to drag you up on the mountain and I need to present you back to the Lord. Why? As my token, as my expression to God Amen. that for Christ I'll live and for Christ I'll die. Yes. And, 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 and even this past <clears throat> week, there were testimonies of how you can make your wife, your children, your others, your idols. Mm -hmm. And the Bible does not say that God only hates idols that don't belong to you. Hmm. He does not say he only despises idols that are not you. God says, Thou shalt not worship any idol. I am the Lord God. Thou shalt have no one, no thing in heaven or in earth of a thing. Father, we thank you for that. We thank you for love. We thank you for your patience. We thank you for your own suffering. We thank you, dear God, that we're living in a time, a very delicate time. And Lord, we want to seize the opportunity to re-examine ourselves and make sure, Lord, that our feet are planted on a solid foundation. We know, Lord, that in our emotions we might waver to the left or to the right, but we're trusting that you will teach us to grab hold of your word, grab hold of your promises, and hold tightly. Father, you said that you would never leave us or forsake us, so help us, O oh Lord, to model that mandate, not to leave you or to forsake you, but to trust you, to depend on you, to rely on you. Teach us how to respond to you. Teach us how to rely on you. Teach us, Heavenly Father, how to recognize that you are always on the scene. Teach us, O oh Lord, how to serve you in spirit and in truth. Father, there are those that may be close to the jaws of hell. Because we've resisted you, we've neglected you, we've ignored you, or because they have just flat out said, I will not serve you. Lord, we are hearing all kinds of statistics of how young folks and folks that have been raised in the church all their lives 
and they are leaving by a drove. Those are the things, Lord, that we're concerned about. But at the same time, Lord, we are concerned that you would help us to remember that we are the models that you have carved out of darkness and brought into your marvelous light. And as your models, Father, we pray that you would help us to be willing to surrender our all in all to you so that, Lord, we might be able, oh Lord, with wisdom and with insight to share with a world of confusion that Jesus Christ still lives and he still lives forever. That Jesus Christ still saves and he will save to the other. Father, we pray that you will touch our hearts, touch our lives. And if there's anyone out there that has not uh, surrendered your life to the Lord, you've never invited Jesus Christ to come into your life and save you. We ask for God that you touch their heart, that you speak to that spirit. Pray that you'll help them to just simply say, Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you preserved your word so that I might hear and recognize the truth of your word. So that by recognizing that you love me and you gave yourself for me, I'm willing to respond to you and say, Lord, I'd like Nicodemus. Lord, would you come into my life and say, you told Nicodemus that he must be born again. So, Lord, would you speak to those hearts? Help them to simply say, Lord, I'm a sinner. And I'm in need of salvation. Would you come into my heart? Would you save me? Forgive me of my sin and accept me as your child. Father, as you're doing so, it is our prayer that you will surround them and, 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 and place on our hearts folks that we definitely need to go and, and, and look them up. Well, they can look us up so that, Lord, we might be able to encourage them and challenge them and help them to know, like Paul, like Saul who went out of his way and he met Jesus, Lord, you transformed his life. You can do the same thing. In Jesus' name we pray. Thanks to you. Awesome. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I need you to know and understand that God loves us and He cares for us. And as we make preparation to worship the Lord around the community, amen, there are those that are not here. There are those that are at home. And, and, and I, let, me, let me just share this as well. For those that may be in the physical house, if you find that there is something that God is, is, is laying on your heart that we need to talk and pray about, Feel free, but let's come together. Let's talk about it. Let's meet one of these deacons or our leaders, and we can pray about those things. And we can encourage one another in those things, and we can get them and make sure that we're on the right road. And that song you sing some things on the right road. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right road, man. Yeah. On the right road. Uh, yes, yes. On the right road. Mm -hmm. Watch this now. Going in the right road. Mm -hmm. I lit on the highway, mm -hmm. barreled down the road, <laughs> and said, this stuff it. looks like it's in the reverse. I had to turn around and come back. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's what the problem does. You know, God loves it. The Bible says, heaven rejoices more than one son that repented of the 99 just broke than the other repented. I'm going mm -hmm. down the wrong road. And, and, and God gets my attention, and I recognize his sin, and I respond to him, and I turn around like the prophet's son. Amen. 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 Heaven rejoices over me. And I come on back home, and I'm where God wants me to be. Rejoice in the Lord. Amen. 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 Would you turn with me in your uh, hymnals to response to reading 598? We're going to read through our response to reading because we recall that Jesus says, as often as you do this, what he did is uh, during the time that they used to uh, have their Passover celebrations, what happened was that the Lord uh, uh, gave a brand new insight on the day of the, what we call the last summer, just before he went to hell. He sat with his disciples and he went through and he gave a brand new series of meetings so that you and I can understand his concern for us. And then uh, response reading number 598, I'm going to read the light. 
You eat dark bread will always be the last first day. It's all about the Lord's time. Amen. Amen. Anyone need more time? Yeah, we praise the Lord. I love it when we help each other. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read the light print news and dark print will all be the last verse. As Jesus was with his disciples, he says, For well, I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered of you as Paul's writing to the church. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body. For which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. So after the manner, same manner, he took a cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Now, before I read this next one, I need you to think about what you just read. Examine yourself. This is not a time for us to sit around and point fingers at this person and that person. Because God is, is reading our hearts. And as we partake of the Lord's Supper, it's me remembering what Christ did for me. Amen. 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 For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. Not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brother, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if ye have hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Amen. See, in the context of that passage, what Paul was trying to address was an un-Christ uh, honoring context. See, when they used to do communion, they used to have like a full meal, which is called the love feast. Amen. And those folks used to get together and come together while they were coming together. They, uh, a lot of times, the first ones in, they would come in and they would gouge themselves. And, and then there were other folks that would come in and they had nothing to eat. They didn't. And, and we're supposed to be doing this thing as a group. Amen. Right. Um, does everybody uh, have what you need? Did, you, did they give you one? As you're preparing your vessels, let's look for it. Our Father and God, we are honoring you and thanking you for honoring us with life and life eternal. We thank you that you set in place this particular fellowship so that we might continue regularly to remember that Christ went to Calvary for us. It wasn't his sin he died, but he died for us. It wasn't the breaking of his body for him, it was for us. It wasn't his spilled blood that was shed for him, it was shed for us. And as he said that he won't eat or drink uh, uh, the fruit of the vine with his disciples anymore until he do so in the kingdom. Lord, as he left them that evening, he was crucified that and, and, and And when he went to the garden and when he was beaten and 
good lives and went to Calvary's tree that morning. Father, we thank you that he never said a lonely word. And we thank you that he rejoiced to give his life for us. Father, we pray even right now for this bread and for this drink, even for those that may be at their homes. Lord, they may take a piece of bread, take a, a, a cup of some beverage, but if it's been set apart for the remembrance of the Lord, may it be done in such a way that Christ will be done. Take this bread, this drink, and we pray your blessings upon it and your food, as it reminds us who you are and what you've done for us. May we never get so complacent that we forget who you are and what you are. Father, we will care for you with praise. Glory and honor for Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As you roll back that top sheet to expose in obedience to the Lord's command, let us now be. Again, we thank and praise you for this day. 
day and for all that it represents. We pray, O oh God, for this city. We pray for our country. We pray for our state. We pray for each family. We pray for each servant. We pray for that soul that's near as hell. That, Lord, as you speak through the many different ways that you do, we will recognize you, we'll respond to you, and we'll learn how to rely on you to guide us through. Now and then that is able to keep us from falling, presenting us false before your presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. We'll now have that church say amen. 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 God bless you and greet one another in the spirit of love. Amen. Amen. Amen.